to the uh, families, the bereaved families, to Ambassador Dan Shapiro, Mayor Barkat, to Ron Lauder, Mike Nisim, Karen Kayemet Yisrael, uh, and uh, JNF of the United States, thank you for keeping the memory of 9 11 uh, alive in Israel in this way and to making this country so vibrant. Uh, to the representatives of Israel's security and police force and America's police force, thank you for all you do for protecting us. We're honored to have you here today. And friends, I think we've heard repeatedly that the immediate reaction of anybody, certainly of our generation, to the events of 9 11 was deeply personal. And I was no exception. Uh, September 2001, Israel was already a year into a bitter struggle against jihadist terrorists, generally called the Second Intifada. Rarely a day went by without suicide bombers striking some bus or restaurant or public place, killing and maiming hundreds of Israelis. My eldest son, Yoav, a graduate of a Jerusalem high school, and his friends were preparing to go into the army, and like many Israelis, before they go in the army, they took a trip. And where did they go? to Lower Manhattan. On September 10th, my son called home and said, look, I got this picture. We're doing handstands on the top of the Twin Towers. And we were so excited about this that me and my buddies, we decided to go back the next morning. I have that picture dated September 10th. The next morning, the next afternoon, I got a call from a good friend of mine at the US Embassy saying, it looks like there's been a horrific terrorist attack in New York City. Two planes have struck the World Temp Towers. They're looking like they're about to collapse. They hadn't collapsed yet. And when the fog cleared in my mind, I thought, Yoav's on top of one of those towers. And I tried to call him, and all the phone lines had gone down. Remember this, trying to call New York that day? All the phone lines gone down, and there were hours of abject terror, terror, until we actually got a, we got a hold of him. They had made the date not for 8.30 the next morning, but for 11.30 the next morning. And they were on a rooftop uh, in southern Brooklyn watching and photographing the fall of the Twin Towers. We didn't know what was going on that then. He was crying. I told him to get down into a basement with a jerry can of water. Who knew what was coming next? Photograph, by the way, appears in a book I wrote about the history of American involvement in the Middle East. Credit to my son who took the photograph. When the personal trauma ended, I think all of us began to understand that we were entering a new world. I thought about my father, who was 16 years old on a certain Sunday in December 1941, listening to the radio and understanding that his world was about to change. I think we all understood that the world was going about to change and that the struggle we were, we were engaged in was not a struggle against an empire or even against a country but a struggle against an idea. And it wouldn't take four years or 10 years or 15 years, but that struggle would be a generational struggle, at least one generation, if not more. We in Israel, and not only Israel, understood, we understood that the same type of evil that drives a human being to put on an explosive vest and get onto a bus full of civilians in Jerusalem is the same evil that drove two planes into the Twin Towers or into the Pentagon or into a field in Pennsylvania then. The same evil. The same evil that drives people to fire thousands of rockets into Israeli cities at towns and schools and farms is the same evil that drives people to cut off the heads of innocent American journalists and others in Iraq and Syria. It is the same, same evil. It is the same evil that drives terrorists to kidnap three Israeli teenagers and execute them mercilessly. It is the same evil. It is the same idea. And therefore, we convene here not only to remember, but to renew our commitment. To honor the memories of those who lost their lives on 9-11, who, who struggled so valiantly to try to save and locate any survivors. We honor them by continuing the struggle. And the struggle is to defend our common values, to defend our common societies, our common freedoms, which they sought to deny us. Our struggle is to defend our common freedom. That is why we will gather here today 
And that is why we will continue as Americans, as Israelis, and as so many allies in the world, we will continue to fight. Thank you.